At the beginning of the movie, we see Kang lying unconscious at a house. She then regains consciousness and gets up and sees that there is an injury on her head. Only then she hears someone scream, and when she comes to the basement, she finds her husband lying unconscious there. Now before she could understand anything, suddenly her husband holds her, which scares her badly, and then he dies. She then starts searching for her son Hyoj and she sees him standing in front of her. She asks him if he is okay and calls him to herself, but as he steps forward, some unseen force drags him into the darkness, and when she goes there to open the door, she gets shocked to find nothing but a wall there. We then see Kang getting arrested for murdering her entire family. Her husband's body was recovered, but her son is still missing, and only some of his blood was found. After 25 years, Kang is released from prison, and when the police are taking her to her home, she notices blood in her cough. Now on reaching her home, the officers tell her that her sentence is not over yet, so she must report to the station if she wishes to leave, and the officers will be here until the end of her sentence. She then goes inside her house, and here we learn that she has larynx cancer. Here Kang takes out a knife from a drawer and goes towards a room, but... Someone from inside starts banging on the door, due to which she gets scared and backs off, and then she screams come out. She then goes to the basement, but then the doorbell rings, and when she opens the door, there is Priest Choi from Religious Welfare. She asks him to go away, but he says he needs her to fill in a form and asks her permission to come in. We then learn that Kang has lost faith in God, and she asks him why he is here, to which he says he is curious to know what happened that night, but she asks him to leave. A scene from the past is then shown in which we see her kids Hyoj and Jiwon with their friends playing video games at a shop. They use a cheat trick to play the game and when the shop owner lady catches them, they run away from there. Now when they return home in the evening, they see that shop owner lady there and their mother asks them to apologize and beg for forgiveness. During this, the lady feels something strange in that house and while leaving, she tried to tell her something, but then she leaves there. Later, Hyoj asks her if he prays hard, he won't die early like dad, to which she says doctors are searching for a cure and he will be cured soon. That night her husband Chul Jung, who is a cop, comes home drunk and she finds a lipstick mark on his shirt. Now when he tries to get close to her, she doesn't let him, which makes him very angry and he starts abusing her, and then he leaves the house. Now after some time when Kang is sitting in her room, someone tries to open the door. She thinks it must be her children, but when no one answers, she goes to the door, and only then someone unlocks the door with a key. She tries to look outside but sees no one, and suddenly someone attacks her, but before he can open the door, she attacks him with a scissor and drives him away. Here Jiwon sees someone outside his door, and he hides in a closet in fear. Hearing his scream, Kang runs to Hyo's room and asks him if he screamed, to which he says no. She then goes to Jiwon's room, who tells her that Hyo startled him. The next day Chol Jun comes to the house with his team for an investigation, where an officer tells him that all the fingerprints are of his wife's. Kang tells the detective that it didn't feel like a human. Now when the detective asks Hyo what he saw last night, he says nothing. This frustrates Chol Jun and he yells at him, causing him to leave there. Kang then goes to him and asks him if he saw something. To which he gives her a note, on which it was written that get out of this house or the father will kill the child. She asks him who gave this to him, but he says nothing. Later, while she was returning from church, the shop lady stops her and tells her that she sensed a bad aura at her house. She asks her if she experienced anything bad recently and gives her a number of a feng shui expert. Kang calls that expert to her house, whose compass leads him to the basement, and then his locket starts pulling him very strongly towards the door. He opens that door and finds a wall there, but then he hears some voices from behind it and gets terrified. When he comes upstairs, she asks him what's wrong, to which he says he thinks she should get another expert as there is a problem, but he doesn't know what it is, and the best solution is to just move out. While leaving, he tells her it's not related to Feng Shui, and that she should just call a shaman. The scene now shifts to the present, where Kang brings Priest Choi to the basement, where he says he wants to believe her and asks her who did it. She tells him there were people in the house and points him toward that door. Now when Choi opens the door, he finds the wall there and she tells him they took Hyoj. Now Choi starts investigating about the house and he comes to know that Yairung Dong House 34 is an infamous haunted house where an entire family just vanished in the mid 60s without a trace. He then goes to the police station for further investigation and learns that on November 11, 1967, a mother and her two daughters disappeared from that house. Meanwhile, Kang is shocked to see some marks on the mirror and senses someone's presence there. She goes to the basement with a plow and tries to break that wall, but then he starts hearing some voices of children. She finds two girls playing there with their dolls and asks them who they are, and when they turn towards her, Kang gets scared and tries to leave there, but upstairs she finds a Japanese woman wearing kimono with a knife in her hand. The woman tries to attack her, but she shuts the door, and when she opens the door, the woman is gone. But suddenly she says that this is her house, due to which Kang gets terrified and runs away from there. 
The movie again goes to the past, where we see a shaman doing some ritual in her house. She made a connection with the spirits and tells her that those people are still here. Shaman's daughter asks Kang to close her eyes, and when she opens her eyes after a while, she gets terrified to see an old man and a family in front of her. She also sees a woman and a man there, due to which she gets very scared and starts screaming and asks them to stop all this, but the shaman's daughter explains to her that the ritual is not over yet, and stopping now could cause great harm. Then suddenly everyone disappears from there and she asks them to leave. Later that night, Hyoj returns home without Jiwon, and they both set out to find him. She also informs Chol Jung about this and after some time the search team finds Jiwon's dead body there. Now Chol Jung breaks down badly seeing his child's dead body, and he starts taking out all his anger on Hyoj blaming him for all this. Kang also gets very sad seeing Jiwon's dead body and she cannot believe that he has left them. Now Priest Choi during his investigation finds that in 1942, Japan's best shaman Maski Abino came to Korea to build General Wadeb's residence. Abino insisted on building the house on the lot, and the general's family was slaughtered on November 11th. He then goes to the reporter who had written that article and he tells him that in 1967 and 1992, people went missing in similar ways. And in 1942, when he wrote that article the same case happened at the same house. Due to harsh exploitation by the Japanese, the farmer's rage reached a fever pitch, so they went to General Wape's residence to capture him. Their maid led the mob to the general's hiding spot, but there was only a wall and the general and his wife were nowhere to be found. He then visits Kang and tells her that something weird is happening in the house. He shows her his report about all the missing people cases from the house and tells her that it repeats every 25 years, and today is that day. She tells him that she saw these people, and they are still here. Only then does the bell rings and the officers tell father that the meeting time is over. Father Choi asks her to go with him as it will be dangerous for her if she stays here, but she says if today is the day, she has to stay here. Now late that night, she notices the clock stops at 11.11 p.m., and she goes to the basement to that door. The door opens, and she finds that there is no wall there, and she enters a dark place through that door. She then comes out of the basement, and she gets shocked to see that her house is in the same condition as it was before 25 years ago. She goes to her room but finds that it's locked, so she grabs the keys from a drawer, and as she opens the door, she sees someone there. She tries to grab her and we see that it's the same scene that happened 25 years ago and she gets shocked to see herself inside the room. She then goes to Hyod's room and becomes very emotional seeing him. Strangely he was able to see her and gets scared seeing her, but when she hugs her, he recognizes her. Only then the young Kang comes there, so she locks the door and hands him a note asking him to give this to mom and not look at it. It is also revealed here that when Chol Jun was leaving the house, it was Hyoj from the future whom he saw, who later goes to Ji Yun to tell him that he couldn't protect him. Kang then returns to her realm, where the Japanese woman and the mother with two daughters ask her to get out, and when she starts leaving there, an old man comes in front of her. Kang gets very scared seeing all this and runs to the basement, but the old man follows her there as well. Now here it is revealed that the old man is none other than Hyoj and he shows her the locket she had given him to make her believe him. We then see that Chol Jun was so angry after Ji Won's death that he wanted to kill Hyoj, and when Kang tries to save him, he blames her too saying she was going to leave after killing his son. She tries to calm him down and asks Hyoj to get out of there, but Chol Jun attacks and knocks her down. Hyoj tells her he waited for 75 years to meet her today, and everyone who lived in this house is confined in time. They are in limbo, unaware of each other. On November of every 25 years, the gap in time slowly cracks, and on the 11th day, it opens completely, mixing all timelines together. She asks him what happened that day, to which he says she saved him, and that's why he is still alive, but she must not have saved him, as it was his fate to die that day. Her life was ruined because of her, and he came here to tell her not to save him. Now as Chol Jun was about to kill Hyoj, he calls her mom for help, and old Hyoj asks her not to go to save him but she says that is her fate and leaves there saying she loves him. She then attacks Chol Jung and asks him to stop, but accidentally stabs him with the knife. Now when the young Kang reaches there, the old Kang returns to her realm, but while leaving, she remembers that she had promised Hyodes that she would cure his disease. But in 1992 there was no cure for his disease, so she drags him inside so that he can be treated in 2017. After that, she introduces him to Hyoj, and when he shakes hand with him, he comes to know that the father Choi is none other than his childhood friend Juno. Later, she tells Hyoj that at any moment now, she has to go away. Now when Choi is taking Hyoj from there, the officers stop him and ask him about the child, on which he tells them that he is Kang's son, who went missing 25 years ago, and after a long journey, he arrived from the past. We then come to know that Hyoj has a hereditary heart disease, and Kang had asked Choi to take him somewhere where he will be loved and treated. He takes him to Yoni, who was his childhood crush and she was still wearing a necklace made of marbles given by him.
please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.